Really, the need for the art preserve began way back in the 70s when Ruth came to the art center as a young woman and got a call from a good friend of hers who wanted to take her north to Phillips, Wisconsin and see the property surrounding a tavern owned by a man named Fred Smith that he had populated with concrete figures that he had created over the years representing historical figures, local figures, sort of period figures. And so talking to Ruth about that experience, she said, first of all, she was just overwhelmed by Fred's creativity and the creative impulse that found its way in spite of the fact that Fred was not a trained artist, but did this more out of a, a self-taught sort of context. So the work itself was overwhelming to Ruth, but to be in the context of that work and to be able to walk around that property surrounding the tavern, to be in the midst of all of that, she said was something more than than she could imagine and and it was really at that point and moment that she saw the prospect of environments created by artists like the one that Fred Smith created around his tavern it was a powerful moment for her that found expression later in her life but but for that experience it was um, pivotal for what came later so the Art Preserve really is a response to the need to engage the public in our permanent collection of artist-built environments. The collection started years and years ago. As the collection grew over time, the need to allow the public to engage in the collection on a regular basis became evident. So in 2007, the Art Center had Sublime Spaces and Visionary Worlds, which was the first time that we really fully explored the collection of artist-built environments. And at that point, it was clear that the public would like to be able to regularly access the work and, and build long-term relationships with the work. So as the idea of collecting this type of material grew and, and as our practice in, in doing it continued, our need for storage and our ability to bring that work out and show it on a regular basis became somewhat limited because these, these are big pieces. That it, they include houses and sheds and hundreds of concrete figures and recreations of artist studios, artist apartments. And so those two elements, the, the need to store and preserve and the need to uh, really expose the public to it, which was difficult with our current circumstances, drove the decision to find a site and, and build a new building that could serve those purposes in uh, new and unique ways. So Ruth had a vision initially in 2007 of a shared facility that could really be the storage space that we needed, could allow the public in, but could be the space that conservation and other work took place as well out on the open floor. That vision still held very true, but additional aesthetics and visitor experience and kind of a curated experience was added to that over time. And it was really through a collaborative process led by Ruth of really ideating around each individual collection and, and what the needs for that particular collection were. There are all the needs that are a part of any museum in terms of environments and security and things like that that preserve the art and make sure the art is safe. But really the maybe even more critical needs is the need to respond to the work that is housed by the, the building. And so in this instance, it's all these wonderful artist-built environments. And while uh, not all of them were created by self-taught artists, many of them were. And so the materials that were used in creating the building reflects some of those simple materials that are very often used by self-taught artists. Things like concrete and stone and, and wood. And, and also we wanted the building, of course, to respond to the meadow. The building is set into the side of a hill which has certain environmental advantages, but it, it just seems right to have the building integrated with the, the meadow we're in, with the hill, just as many of these environments were integrated into outside environments that had the same types of features. The design process across the board was very collaborative for the Art Preserve between the architects, Ruth Kohler, curators, really anyone who had been engaged in the Artist Built Environments collection in the past. The building, you know, as a collaboration, it had some fits and starts. And the ideas that began in 2007, with it being a very visible storage, warehousing type facility, 
to what the reality is today of, of this kind of hybrid, not quite a museum, not quite storage, a new type of space, really developed through years of collaboration and conversation and response to what the needs of this particular collection were. And so there was a really wonderful moment where Ruth and myself and Sam Gapmeyer really sat down and started to articulate what are some of the aspects of visiting artist-built environments in situ. What are some of these moments of delight that we have all experienced when we get to discover these incredible treasures that exist on the countryside? What are those elements of that visit and how could we start to bring some of those elements forward in the design of the art preserve? Visiting is like a meander rather than a, a straight line, point A to point B. It's a building with very few 90 degree angles. There's no sort of square boxes and, and there's not a clear path that you follow once you get there. It's rather a process of discovery, much as it was for Ruth when she discovered Fred Smith or for many of us when we've come upon an artist built environment out in the wild and we see something that's surprising and phenomenal and um, really rewarding, and, and that's what we wanted the building to do for the artwork that's housed here. The Art Preserve being a response, the building itself being a response to this collection, you can imagine isn't an easy, straightforward path. So instead of building a space that in its entirety would hold this collection, but there weren't design considerations for each individual artist that would be held here would have been a much easier process. But because every space needed to be fitting for that particular artist, it was incredibly challenging. And um, we were really lucky with our architects, Trace Bird's workshop, in that they are used to a more collaborative process. And so they were not um, upset by any changes like as we got down a road and realized Emory Blagden could be better served in an enclosed space rather than a partially open space. And that dictated changing the roof line, you know, it was such a collaborative process. And of course, that's a hard process. Collaboration is always harder than individual isolated pursuits. But that's also what makes it so exciting and makes it so specific to this particular collection. Ruth's vision and extreme care for these types of works is why the collection came to be at the Art Preserve and then also why the Art Preserve came to be. The connection that she felt with the individual objects, with the individual sites, with the um, artists themselves, she wanted to make sure anybody that cared to could also have that connection over time and that there was a space for that to happen. Well from the beginning the whole thing was Ruth's vision. It began with her getting to know what an artist built environment was and, and the enthusiasm she had for that work and as she shared it with others that gathered momentum and, and other elements of the organization, our board, our, our supporters, all sort of gathered around the idea of us collecting these artist built environments and, and of course all of that fed and led into the construction of the building. All of that was Ruth's vision. <laughs> 